So today we're going to start and do the heat of fusion lab. Okay, it's a pretty simple um, experimental setup. We're going to be using two nested foam cups just for extra insulation. There's two. We're using some warm water back here, along with some ice, um, and then our scale. Uh, to do heat diffusion, we're also going to need to use our LabQuest hooked up to our temperature probe. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is measure the mass of these empty foam cups. So again, the way we do our measurements, um, do those foam cups weigh more than 100? No. 10? Ooh, even 10 too much. Okay, I feel like that looks pretty good. Um, so I'm going to take a picture of that. And then show you. You can read that mass. If you need to pause, you can always pause. Okay. After um, we do that, we're going to add some warm water. I say warm water, I mean that our initial temperature of that water is that. We don't need a lot of warm water in here. Um, we're just going to pour some. Okay. Now we're going to take the mass of the cups and the water. So obviously we added mass. Alrighty, so again, uh, we will take an image of that. That is 120, and then let me show you. That is your mass. Okay. So that is the mass of the warm water um, in the foam cups. Okay. Now we're going to add some ice to this foam cup and we're going to stir this down until we get close to zero degrees. So we're going to start off with some pretty big chunks. Obviously, when we melt um, this ice, right, that's the heat of fusion that we're doing the lab for. Um, but we're going to add ice until we get close to zero. Um, so it might take a couple of handfuls here. As you can see, the temperature dropped pretty quickly. As that solid water uh, melts into liquid, we'll obviously be adding mass to our liquid. We'll take the remaining solid out and then measure how much of that ice melted, and that math will help us get to the heat of fusion, how much energy it took for that ice to melt. Add 
add a little more ice in here. If I have to take it out later, I will. Just to help this cool down a little faster. When we take the ice out of um, the cup, we're going to want to be sure that we uh, try to leave as much water behind as possible. So um, we're just going to be a little bit careful and able to do that. We're getting closer. I still have ice chunks in here, right? But waiting for it to get down to zero. It's very exciting and it does take a little time. So we'll probably fast forward the movie until you see this number get lower. So stirring not only um, helps the ice melt, right, because you're getting it around more warm water, um, you're letting those, uh, those particles collide with the warm particles, um, and that will also helps um, get rid of that energy that they need to release into this liquid state. But also remember that temperature is um, a measure of the average kinetic energy of those particles. And so if we want it to average out, um, we're going to have, um, try to get the same temperature throughout the whole foam cup scenario. I think 0.2 is pretty close to zero. Oh, it's flickering with 0.1, hold on. So I'm gonna take this ice out, right? So again, our, our lowest temperature, we were there. Sorry, I took the thermometer out. It's 0.1, okay? So now um, we're just gonna take the remaining ice in the cup out, but kind of hold it, let it drain off all the water that it can. We don't want any mass of ice um, in our cup, okay? So now we're gonna re-weigh, and we're gonna find out how much of that ice fused, right, or melted um, into that liquid state. So let's just start over, right? 100, is it more than 200? No, okay. Oh, 80 seemed to be a bit too high. Go to 170. So there is the mass for you to record.